Washington Redskins host the Cleveland Browns. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Washington, D.C. Hope you've had a pleasant Thanksgiving. Tom Hammond and Joe Namath ready to bring you a matchup between two teams everyone figured to be a cinch for postseason play again this season. But actually, Joe, two teams struggling to stay alive in the playoff picture. Struggling to stay alive, but I think Washington is the more desperate of the two teams. Without a win today, I think they're out of the playoff picture. Well, Joe Gibbs is hoping to put a little spark in his offense. He has benched the Super Bowl most viable player, Doug Williams, and he's going to go with young Mark Rippon at quarterback. Well, Coach Gibbs says Doug Williams isn't 100% healthy, but he does need the shot. Rippon played extremely well the four games earlier in the season. In fact, he was the highest rated quarterback in the league. But Rippon will need help from an inconsistent offensive line. The return of Russ Grimm and Joe Jacoby, two all pros offensive linemen, should help him a lot. The Cleveland Browns have a healthy quarterback and one of the best in Bernie Kosar. And the Brown running game should be bolstered by the return of Kevin Mack. Kevin Mack is back. He is the best runner the Cleveland Browns have, but he's been out parts of six games this season including the last two weeks but I tell you I don't think the running game is going to decide today's game we have the league's very best pass defense with Cleveland led by cornerbacks Hanford Dixon and Frank Minifield going against the NFL second rated passing attack in the league led by Art Monk Gary Clark and Ricky Sanders I think this game is going to be decided with the passing game big plays downfield Marty Schottenheimer and his Browns are very tough against the pass, allowing their opponents to complete only 49%, one of four teams in the NFL under 50. And Joe Gibbs and his Redskins needing a win badly, but always tough playing here at home. The Browns have won the toss, and they will be receiving. And this kickoff is sponsored by Budweiser, the king of beers. Chip Will Miller puts the foot to the ball, and it'll be taken by Fontenot at the seven-yard line. It's a seam to the outside, across the 25 to the 29-yard line, a penalty marker down. 22 yards on the return by Fontenot. Let's check the penalty. Fred Wyant is the referee. An eagle block against the Cleveland Browns will set them back. Let's take a look at the starting Cleveland offensive lineup now, ranked 21st in the NFL, better in the passing game. Kosar is healthy, throwing well in practice this week, but he has only six touchdown passes this season. Viner is the leading rusher and receiver. What does the offensive line have to do today, Joe? Well, they're going to have to protect that middle. They'll get a wide rush from both Manley and Mann, so the guys right in the middle, Larry Williams, Rikosi, and Fike, have to build up a wall in front of Kosar. The ball placed back at the 13-yard line of the Browns for the first play of the game. Bernie Kosar now healthy. Kevin Mack is the lone setback. Kosar will put it up. And it is complete. Ernest Biner, who is the leading receiver for the Browns, makes his 40th catch of the season. It goes for eight yards. Alvin Washing Walton on the stop for the Redskins. Here's the Washington defensive line, uh, starting with a four-man front, Joe. Yes, they're going to have to put pressure up the middle to get to Kozar. If Kozar has time to throw with his anticipation, they'll pick this secondary apart of Washington. Among the linebackers, Coach Gibbs says Marshall gets better each week as he learns the scheme, and the secondary hit hard by injury. Walton is the team's top tackler. Second and one for the Browns. Hit at the line of scrimmage and driven back. It'll depend on the spot of the football. Kevin Mack, on his return to the NFL Wars, got a rude greeting by the center of that Washington defense. Well, we mentioned that interior line play. Here you see number 72, Dexter Manley, and Okowitz makes the penetration to get the con to make the contact in the backfield. That's the area that the Cleveland Brown offensive line has got to protect right up the gut in the middle. Actually lost a yard on the play. It'll set up a third and two for Cleveland from their own 21-yard line. Five defensive backs into the game for the Redskins. Opening series of the game at RFK Stadium in Washington, D.C. Kosar across the middle, complete to Brennan for the first down. Brian Brennan with a clutch reception, his 34th of the season. He's the third leading Browns receiver, and he gives Cleveland the first down. 
But Kozar gets some time. I'll tell you why. Number 44, Ernest Biner, picks up the blitz right now and affords Kozar the time to go to Brennan, who was one-on-one -on -one out there with Wilbur. Good play by Brennan and Kozar, but you got to give credit for that block right there to Biner. It goes for 15 yards, and the Browns keep their drive going from their own 34. Good yardage across the 35 up to about the 39-yard line. They got about five yards on the play. Darrell Grant in the center of that defensive line finally made the tackle for the Redskins. Well, if Cleveland can keep gaining yardage on their first down plays, I mean good yardage, five, five yards here, nine yards the first time, they're going to have a successful offensive day. Washington has got to shut them down on first down and force them into obvious passing situations to be successful defensively. Redskins come with their nickel defense at second and five. Kozar may be checking off to Mack. Good running room up the middle. Mack's got another first down up to the 49-yard line of the Browns. Alvin Walton made a saving tackle after a 10-yard gain. Well, Coach Schottenheimer's been catching some heat over there in Cleveland for his play calling, but Kozar here appeared to call it audible. Uh, checked off, and Williams, number 70, does a good job of turning number 72, Dexter Manley, out on the left side of your screen right there to give Mack the huge hole. Kozar is brilliant at calling the audibles, too, Tom. What would have been the key that he saw there to go to the run? I'm not sure who he was keying on right now because I don't know what play he had called previously. Obviously, he spotted something, though, that was perfect. Mack has carried three times for 14 yards, and the Browns for the first down. Kozar drills it complete to Biner at the 40-yard line, and that'll be close to another Brown first down. Alvin Walton stopped Biner, but he did get just over 10 yards and another Cleveland first down on the play. Yeah, and that's the second time in a row that Kozar has gone to Ernest Biner. They move him out wide, and they get Alvin Walton, a, a strong safety, trying to cover Biner, and he's given Biner a lot of room right now. Number 40, Walton, he might climb up on Biner, start harassing him at the line of scrimmage. Don't give him that much room to get downfield to catch the pass. Everyone in Cleveland uh, associated with the Browns team was talking about the week that Kosar had in practice. He'd been throwing the ball well. He looks very sharp here in the early game. From the Redskins, 39. The Browns with the first down. Kosar calls timeout. Joe he started to check off and then was running out of time on the play clock and calls the first time out of the game. It comes with 10-13 left in a scoreless first quarter. In the village of Upper Nyack, the firemen fight fires with ladders and hoses. And a Murata fax machine. It's used to receive floor plans and detailed drawings of buildings so they can plan how to attack the fire before they get to the fire. Murata fax machines. jungle out there. You can survive with the new four-door Mitsubishi Montero. Its V6-powered tame snarling beasts. It takes you away to a more civilized world. The new four-door Montero. Suddenly the obvious choice. Presenting a turning point in the history of screw driving. The Black & Decker cordless screwdriver. A screwdriver so powerful it can drive a hundred screws on a single charge. Any less. And it wouldn't be the Black & Decker cordless screwdriver. 
Cleveland Browns driving here in the first quarter. And Joe, the uh, the Washington Redskins playing that 4-3 defense, which seems to be the exclusive province of NFC teams these days. Yes, but what that does to the Cleveland team, being from the AFC, it forces them to spend more time during the week practicing against a defense they're not familiar with. And Washington hoped that Cleveland not being familiar with the 4-3 will have a tough time. So far, Cleveland's uh, they've done a good job keeping the ball. They've had it four minutes and 47 seconds off the opening kickoff, and they've been excellent on first down. Kosar will pass on first down. Complete. Brian Brennan makes another catch just about a yard short of the first down marker. It'll go for nine yards. Barry Wilburn wrestles him out and kept him from getting the first down. Well, Kozar is going to feel some pressure from time to time today, and it's going to come from the outside, number 72, Dexter Manley, you see, trying to get inside of Paul Farron. Now, that's the rush that Farron has to be careful of because Manley has so much speed going upfield Farron will kind of favor that way, and as you just saw, Manley can jump underneath and get to the quarterback. First down plays continue to be powerful for the Browns. That one picked up nine. It's second and one, which gives Kosar a lot of flexibility. Kosar has not missed a pass yet. He's four for four. This is a handoff to Mack. And Mack has another Cleveland first down. Week 13 of the NFL season. Let's check in some other scores now. And, or no scores. As that yeah, be. yeah, but I like the home team in that Buffalo-Cincinnati game. That's a tough one. And, well, but Pittsburgh-Kansas City game could be real ugly. <laughs> I don't expect Chicago to lose. They're too good a team, and they're not going to get surprised uh, this late in the season. No score in this one either. We have eight minutes, 52 seconds left in the first quarter. The Browns took the opening kickoff, started at their 13-yard line, and have advanced it now to the 29 of the Redskins. thrown back again by the center of the Washington defense. Man, Butts, Grant, and Manley up front. Big Daryl Grant, 77, made a good play, closing down the run, the hole in the center of the field that time. Grant's, uh, he's not a tall player. He only goes about 6'1", and his advantage being that short is he can get up underneath those blockers and play them off. He gets good leverage. Grant's 6'1", 275 pounds, eight years out of Rice. That first down play was not as good as the Browns' others have been. Tenth play of the drive coming up. Kosar under pressure, steps up, and completes the pass to Langhorn, and Reggie Langhorn gets up close to the first down marker as Kosar improvises in the face of a good rush from the Redskins, nine or ten yards before Alvin Walton gets the tackle. But this is just what we mentioned earlier in the show, the center of that Cleveland Brown offensive line. Ricosi and the two guards, Fike and Williams, must build a wall up front so Kozar can step up to avoid that rush. That's just what happened that time. The offensive line in the middle did a good job. Langhorn struggling for yardage and got enough for the first down, a gain of nine on the play. Langhorn across the middle, just out running Daryl Green. So the Browns with their fifth first down of this drive. Kozar sacked back at the 25-yard line. Dexter Manley led the charge of the Redskins. Manley gets him for a loss of eight. Manley, the leader of sacks for the Redskins with his ninth of the season. Well, you see what happened. Now, Manley set Paul Fair in the offensive tackle, number 74, up for this outside rush. A couple of plays previously, Manley beat him to the inside. Fair in number 74 is worried about that. This time, Manley just puts on the speed and beats him to the outside. Dexter says he's played pretty well this year, but he hasn't been 100%. He's had some nagging injury, but he figures he's got a pretty good job. Second and 18 coming up for the Cleveland Browns as Kosar lines up from the shotgun. Again, Chase from the pocket lets it fly, incomplete. Too tall for the intended receiver, Clarence Weathers. 
Well, Weathers was open that time. Of course, Kozar was forced out of the pocket by the blitzing Wilbur Marshall. And anytime you get Kozar running around out there, these defensive guys just lick the chops. I mean, he doesn't exactly look like Fred Astaire moving around there. But Kozar has great anticipation when to throw the ball. And here he gets it off cleanly, but just overthrows Weathers, who was open. First misfire of the afternoon for Kozar. And now, with the 13th play of the drive coming up, we'll see if it's lucky for the Browns or not. Three wide receivers in the game. The Redskins in their nickel defense on third and 18. Kozar lobs it up for no one. Langhorn perhaps was the closest to it. But it falls incomplete. There's a penalty marker on the field. An offside call against the Redskins. And that's going to give Cleveland another chance. That's going to give them another chance. And not only that, if Cleveland's not successful on this next play, they're going to be five yards closer for a field goal. Now, these are the kind of things Coach Gibson, hey, fellas, come on. Open your eyes. Don't line up offsides. Don't beat the ball. Go on the football. We're hurting ourselves. That's what Coach Gibbs has been talking about. They've been hurting themselves this entire season, especially with the turnover. So given new life, the Browns will try to convert on third and 13 from the Redskin 20. Two wide receivers to the right, one to the left. Kozar in the shotgun. Pressure again. Kozar steps up, completes it, and then Viner drops it. It'll be ruled incomplete. Viner turned to run at the 15-yard line and dropped the football. Clarence Vaughn covered him there. It'll be ruled as an incomplete pass. Well, you see what's happening when Washington can force Cleveland into a passing situation. They're putting some pressure on Kozar. They're making him throw when he's not quite ready. Right here, Biner certainly should have made the catch, but hey, he wouldn't have picked up the first down. It was field goal time anyway. Matt Barr is on to try the field goal for the Browns. He's hit 21 of 25 this season. 47 has been his longest. This one's going to be about 37 yards. Barr's kick. No good. He missed it wide to the right from 37 yards. The Browns with a long drive, but come up empty. No score, first quarter. <laughs> It's a jungle out there. You can survive with the new four-door Mitsubishi Montero. It's V6-powered, tame, snarling beasts. It takes you away to a more civilized world. The new four-door Montero, suddenly the obvious choice. It takes time to get your gas to see the light. It takes time. It isn't always love at sight. From the boy's little glance, still she's ready for romance. Remember, little man, it takes time. It takes time to make the coffee boy late. It takes time to get your gas at the day. From the first moonlit wall till you get the baby talk. The Elegance Collection man, from Citizen. Time. Yeah. Send up a cross foot. Give me an object. There's a place in the friendly skies where not everyone's so friendly. Stop. Hold it. Minimum. Check it out. Over 9,000 mechanics of United Airlines work Give here. Give me a mini grinder. They're picky, fussy, stubborn. But if you fly, they're the best friends you'll ever have. United, rededicated to giving you the service okay. you deserve. Come fly the friendly skies. Suddenly, there's a whole new development in sports sedan so superior it was voted Japan's car of the year. Introducing the 1989 Galant from Mitsubishi. Suddenly, the obvious choice. The snap is a good snap, a little high to Runniger, but he gets it down cleanly in good position, and Matt Barr hits the ball cleanly. He didn't slip at all, but he left it out to the right just a little bit, as you can see by his reaction. So Barr, who's having a good year, misfires from 37 yards out, and the Browns, who had the ball nearly nine minutes, come away with zero points. Hey, I'm excited to see Ripon play now. This boy was hot earlier in the season. Let's see if he still has that touch. All right, he's on the field with that Redskin offense. First down from their own 20. And they'll give 
hit the ball on the run. First time out of the gate to Jamie Morris, the rookie out of Michigan, who gets the start today. And Clay Matthews pounces on him for a gain of about a yard. Here's the starting offense for the Washington Redskins. Rippon would be the top-rated quarterback in the NFL if he had enough passing attempts to qualify. And as we pointed out, not the only new face in the backfield. Jamie Morris from Michigan, the rookie, starts at running back. And what about the offensive line? The Hogs return, Joe. They've been inconsistent, but number 68 and number 66, Grimm and Jacoby, are back, so they should play a much better game. Jamie Morris, the little guy, only 5'7", drew a big crowd on the first play, got two yards. And then the ball again. Cuts back. Nice move by Morris. He's got a Redskin first down, just short of the 35-yard line. Felix Wright made a saving tackle, but Morris squirted free for 13 yards. Just good blocking right there in the interior of the line. Morris is able to hide behind those big blockers, then cut back, and Golick can't get back over there, number 79, and just a huge hole up front. Morris said he was excited and a little nervous about starting the game today. He's the younger brother of Joe Morris of the New York Giants, who he said really was his first coach. He's helped him since he first took up the game of football. Morris again, third straight carry. Another good gain. He's to the 40 and beyond to the 41. And again, Felix Wright is called on to make the stop, but Morris picked up six. Here's a look at that Cleveland defense, fourth in the NFL, number one against the pass. Pro bowler Golik anchors the defensive line. It's a pretty good linebackers on this Brown squad, Joe. Well, they have one of the best group of linebackers in the entire league, but on that last play, 51, Eddie Johnson was blown about seven yards deep. Secondary of the Browns features the Pro Bowl corners, Dixon and Minifield. Minifield having his best season. Second and three for Washington. Morris again. Stopped close to the first down. Bob Golick, the nose tackle, in on the carry, uh, on the stop as Morris has carried the ball every offensive play for the Redskins so far. There's some early scores, Joe. Yeah, I kind of figured uh, Miami might outscore the Jets today. Neither team's been playing well. Of course, it's two good defensive teams in Buffalo and Cincinnati. Well, a big third down play coming up. Third down and less than a yard to go for the Washington Redskins. Morris, who has carried the ball every play, lined up as the tailback in the I formation. Reggie Branch. Is the blocking back. And it will be close to the first down. I don't know if he got it or not. Morris once again asked to carry the mail, and Cleveland was ready for it. Well, this is the thing that's been hurting the Redskins. They get in short yardage situation, third and one, fourth and one. Over the last few weeks, they haven't been able to get off the ball and get that yardage when they need it. I don't know. Maybe they're veteran offensive line. They are veteran line. They're wily. They're smart. Maybe they're not getting off the ball as quickly as they used to get off the ball. So Morris comes up short on the third down attempt. No gain on the play. And Greg Coleman in punt formation for the Redskins. There's Coleman, 12-year veteran out of Florida A&M. And Gerald McNeil, the ice cube, deep for Cleveland. Line drive kick from Coleman. Backs McNeil up to the 10. Picks his way forward across the 15 to about the 17-yard line. 45-yard punt, five yards on the return, still no score. Want to take better pictures? Get the new Canon EOS 750, the only autofocus SLR with a flash like this and a system with computers and motors in every lens. Here, try it. Try the zoom. Easy, right? Well, that's EOS. New Canon EOS 750. Photography, pure and simple. Buy EOS today with no money down, low monthly payments at participating Canon dealers. In 1859, Isaac Cook created a great American champagne to launch the great American clipper ships. Today, people are still launching celebrations with Cook's Imperial American Champagne. It's a jungle out there. You can survive with the new four-door Mitsubishi Montero. It's V6-powered, tame, snarling beasts. It takes you away to a more civilized world. The new four-door Montero, suddenly the obvious choice.
Here's something everyone worries about when flying, whether their carrier luggage will fit. Could you put this in the overhead compartment? <laughs> How about under the seat? <laughs> so at Samsonite, we've designed carry-ons you truly can carry on, like our garment bag and suitcase in one, packed with features that make things easier to pack. At Samsonite, we'll never leave you holding the bag, proving once again that our strengths are legendary. Jack Nicholas, Curtis Strange, Ray Floyd, and Lee Trevino. Golf's fabulous foursome. Play the Skins game today on NBC. Coming up next here on NBC, golf action, the Skins game. And uh, quite an opening to the Skins game yesterday, uh, Joe. I think uh, Floyd took down 90,000 on, <laughs> on the first day of action. Uh, Floyd, Nicholas, Trevino, and Strange, and a uh, pretty good payday. Hey, Floyd says he's been in a lot of tournaments, and he's been close many times, but he's never felt the nervousness as he has in this tournament and a couple of putts that he had yesterday. How can we get you in that Skins game? We've got it down. Thanks. Yeah. The Browns. The Browns took the ball on their own 13 to start the game, but came away empty after holding it for nearly nine minutes. First down here at the 17. Pass complete in the flat to Clarence Weathers, who is out of bounds after a short gain. Let's go to Bob Costas for an update. All right, Tom, big game in Cincinnati. The Bengals' first possession against the Bills. Long drive. Now they're at the one. Fourth and goal. Icky Woods gets the call, and he's pushed back. A combination of Scott Radisek and Cornelius Bennett on the tackle. The Bills take over on downs. Still no score in the first. Back to Tom and Joe. All right, Bob, no score here either with 2.14 left in the first. A similar situation. The Browns drove down the field. Didn't score any points as they missed the field goal. Second and four coming up for Cleveland here from their own 23-yard line. Ozar looked one way, then scrambles the other and throws it left-handed, didn't he? <laughs> Incomplete intended for Kevin Mack. The master of improvisation, Bernie Kosar, gets a little pat from man. That was quite a play by Kosar, but what happened is Kosar got fooled. He wanted to throw to the right. Right now, you see he's ready to go, but Washington rolled that way. They double-covered his receiver, and now he gets that left-handed pass off, and I don't think we'll be seeing too many more of those left-handed <laughs> shots. He's not exactly Kenny Stabler. <laughs> <laughs> Do they have a category for incomplete left-handed? Passes. Sure, they put an asterisk up there, you know. That was a lefty. Third and four for Cleveland. They've converted only one of two third downs so far. Remember that first drive, they got great gains on first down. Didn't have many third downs. Gosar whips it complete. That's another Brown first down across the 40 as Langhorn. Picks up 20 yards on the play, and Kosar and Langhorn hook up for a big Brown first down. Once again, the key is the protection that Kosar gets right here. Here you see Langhorn on Clarence Vaughn, number 31. He'll fight and then jump to the inside. Watch him get inside position right here, and now he's wide open crossing that short, shallow zone area. Good Kos protection up front, too, Tom, from this offensive line once again. You see they keep that middle right there toward the line of scrimmage. They can't get into Kosar's face. And he is so accurate. Given time, he's going to complete it. He's hitting 56% of his passes on the season. Well, they misfired on that one. Kevin Mack in the flat. Overshot by Kosar. Let's go back to Bob Costas. All right, Tom, let's take a look at what happened moments ago at the Meadowlands. Dan Marino looking for Freddie Banks, guarded by John Booty, able to shake that booty for the touchdown. And the game is tied at 7 at the Meadowlands. Thomas. That was weak, Bob, weak. <laughs> no score here at RFK, 123 left. He just had to get that in. Shake that booty. <laughs> Kozar lost it up over the head of Ernest Biner, who made a cut and came uh, come back for the football and looked like uh, Kosar was expecting him to continue down the sideline. Sure, but Biner has been harassed now. He had Clarence Vaughn, a different coverage man on him, number 31, and he's playing 
Biner much tighter than Walton was earlier. Now he gets a little hand on that number 44 right there in the back and pulls it a bit, but no harm, no foul. I guess that's what the official says. He couldn't have caught the pass anyway. Pass was uncatchable. Third and 10 here for Cleveland. The ball at their own 43-yard line. 119 left in the quarter. No score. Flag down. Kosar's got a man wide open. Brennan down to the 20-yard line, but they're going to bring it back, I believe, illegal procedure against the Cleveland Browns. Darrell Green finally chased down Brennan 37 yards, but it's going to be wiped out. Illegal motion, number 74. Hey, I think the big thing about this play is not necessarily the penalty bringing it back, but to me, Brian Brennan, not known for his speed, able to race past Green. Daryl Green, the fastest man, certainly one of them in the NFL. You talk about some sneaky speed. There's Farron, who was called for the penalty, number 74, on the left side of your screen. He just moves a little early. Protection is good. And watch, here's Brennan outrunning Daryl Green. <laughs> Hello. Headlines. <laughs> Well, Green has been bothered by a gimpy knee, and his speed is not up to par, but still, you would think that it would be impossible for Brennan to get behind him. Third and long here for Kosar. Kosar pumps once and then is buried by the Redskin rush. Second sack of the day for Washington. It's back to the 25-yard line. Dean Hamill, four years out of Tulsa, leading the charge for the Skins. Well, you got to give credit downfield to Darrell Green that time and Wilburn, the cornerbacks. Here's number 72, Dexter Manley going inside, and Hamill, 78, gets to the outside, and he'll finally get back there to Kozar. But you see, Kozar had time. He just couldn't get to an open receiver. Good coverage. So Runniger on to punt for the Cleveland Browns, and let's go with a good one. Clark takes it back at about the 25-yard line and is spun down at the 31. So the Redskins hold, get a 48-yard punt, six yards on the return, still no score. In Japan, 60 automotive journalists named the 1989 Mitsubishi Galant Car of the Year. Now, the Americans report. A refined, impressively built sports sedan. Everything about the Galant GS works well. Galant will blow away the higher price competition. Pure heaven to drive. Perhaps Car and Driver sums up the Galant best when it writes, Watch out, Honda. Decker workmate. About all it can help you do is clean up. But at least it gets out of your way. The Black and Decker workmate. This is not the time to learn that all antifreezes aren't the same. What's in your radiator? Come on, answer. Next Sunday, the NFL plays here. Two playoff contenders go head-to-head -head when the Seahawks take on Doug Flutie and the red-hot New England Patriots. Then it's a good old showdown in the AFC's Wild West when the Broncos battle the Raiders with first place on the line. Before your team takes the field, our team hits the air. NFL Live. Tom Hammond and Joe Namath at RFK Stadium. Let's check the scores. The Bengals have scored on that tough Buffalo defense. Philadelphia leading the Jets and the Dolphins tied up. And we'll see the other scores. First down here for the Washington Redskins from their 33-yard line. Rippon's first pass. One hops Art Monk and incomplete. Frank Minifield covering Monk that time as Rippon's first pass comes up a little short. Is, is that just nerves, Joe? I would guess that it's just nerves. It's a beautiful day to pass the football. I mean, there isn't any wind. The temperature is so nice. There's a little humidity in the air. The quarterback can get a good grip on the ball. I'd guess that that was a little bit of nerves right now. And there's Kevin Mack getting examined by the trainer. 
Well, Mack missed the last two games, just back in the starting lineup today, but looking at his right arm. Second and ten for the Redskins. 55 seconds left in the first quarter, no score. Morris, tough yardage to the 35, got a couple. David Grayson made the tackle for the Cleveland Browns, one of the outside linebackers. Well, Grimm, 68 in the top of the screen, and Mark May, 73, pulled to lead through there, but this time that Cleveland defensive front just stuffs the hole. And what's been the problem, or what the problem is Washington has now, is they have a long yardage, definite passing situation. Jeff Bostic is the injured Redskin, the starting center. Nine years out of Clemson, and how disruptive is it, Joe, to have uh, your center go down? The quarterback has got to take the exchange from a brand new man. That's right. It's different than losing another lineman. You're used to that, that feel, the shape of the butt of the center. I mean, these guys are different centers. They have different uh, backsides, and the quarterback gets used to the one he's working with. So what will happen if Bostic has to leave the game? The backup center and Rippin should be trying to take some snaps right now, in my opinion. And Rippin's not going to be quite as comfortable under the replacement center, Raleigh McKenzie, number 63. Well, it gives us a chance to look forward to the windup of the college football season. And what a game in the Fiesta Bowl for the national championship. It's going to be Notre Dame against West Virginia, two unbeaten teams. And Miami waiting in the wings. They may be the best in college football. They'll take on Nebraska, the Fiesta Bowl, and the Orange Bowl coming your way January 2nd here on NBC. And the bowl games will start with the Hall of Fame Bowl, LSU and Syracuse. Coach Gibbs, Gibbs certainly worried about Bostic, his center. He pointed out that last week Bostic went against probably the best nose tackle in the game up there at San Francisco and Michael Carter, and Bostic just played beautifully. To lose uh, your center, especially a good one, it could be devastating to their running game. Bostic in some obvious pain. And that uh, offensive line has been riddled by injuries, and the only name missing there is Jeff Bostic, who goes down here. Not anymore. What a reminder to our viewers, we will be selecting the Budweiser Most Viable Player for today's game. That comes up at the conclusion of the contest. The play that's put Washington in a bind here is that first down incomplete pass by Rippon. You know, these plays that the quarterbacks have a chance to make successful when your receiver's wide open and the quarterback's not harassed. You've got to make those plays. The receiver was open and Rippon just missed fire. Put him in a tough situation now. Washington has had the ball for seven plays. Six of them have been rushes by Morris. McKenzie is the center in there, and Rippon facing a third and eight. Good protection. Pass is complete. Sanders makes the catch. Chased down by Grayson, but 12 yards and a Redskin first down. Excellent pass protection. Excellent poise by this young man, Mark Rippin. He stood tall back there and waited until a receiver came open. The receiver will be coming from left to right. Look at that protection. There's not a soul around Rippin. He has time to reload and get it off to Sanders for the good gainer. So the Redskins with a little momentum as the first quarter comes to an end. The Redskins and the Browns scoreless. It's the full-size Chevy. Uh, I like that cigar. I'm going to try to get that, that cigar. That was a dead giveaway. You see, I don't <laughs> smoke cigars. <laughs> um, you had a quarterback-to-quarterback -quarterback talk with Mark Rippon yesterday, and uh, you were a little shocked at something he said. Yeah, I asked Rippon what his favorite play was or if he had any favorite pass plays, and he told me it was a play-action pass. That surprises me because of the play action. The quarterback has to turn his back to the defense, and you can't read coverage. But he's had success with play action, and that's a good reason for them to be his favorite play. Bostic has bruised ribs, unlikely to return for this game. That skins with a first down. Here's Morris carrying for the seventh time. They know it's a pass. There's the play action pass, and it goes incomplete, and Rippon is 0 for 2. Yeah, he's 0 for 2, but that's one time not reading the defense. He had one-on-one -on -one coverage downfield, and he could have gotten the ball off. The protection was very good that time. His underneath receivers were covered and didn't get anything out of it. Time of possession is certainly in favor of the Browns, but uh, what do we have? A 0-0 score, huh? 0-0, <laughs> as a matter of fact. And David Neal, our producer, Andy Rosenberg, our director, we're going to get even with him for that uh, shot a minute ago. <laughs> 
We'll be plotting up here at halftime and how we're going to get even. From the 46, second and 10. Nickel defense for the Browns. Keep it on the ground and stop for no gain is Jamie Morris. Actually, it was Oliphant. There's a flag on the play. Mike Oliphant carrying the ball for the Redskins. Number 83, illegal block in the back. So Ricky Sanders called for the illegal block in the back. Update on the scores. And uh, the Cardinals have tied the Eagles. Cliff battle Stout's, of the birds. Cliff Stout's good, Tom. If he can get hot, they'll give Philadelphia a tough battle over there. Chicago clinging to that 7 0 lead. Atlanta's won some big games this year out there at the Raiders up in San Francisco, so they should handle Tampa Bay. They can surprise you, can't they? There's Rippon calling his play two years out of Washington State. He had not played in an NFL game prior to this season. He'd been on injured reserve all his rookie year. He filled in admirably for Doug Williams earlier this year. Second and 18. Rippon passes complete to Oliphant. Dodges one tackler, keeps the legs going, and gets it to the 45-yard line of the Browns, only a couple of yards short of the first down. It goes for 17 before Brian Washington can wrestle him down. Mike Oliphant, just a rookie out of Puget Sound, is very good at catching the ball and running with it afterwards. Good protection, and Rippin smartly comes off to his check receiver, Oliphant. Now, watch this move right here. <laughs> this is what they like about Oliphant. They miss Calvin Bryant in this phase of the game, and Oliphant's the man that can give them the lift. One more look at the pass protection, which is very good. Seventh reception of the season for Oliphant, third round draft choice. Rippon again across the middle and incomplete. It would have been enough for the first down intended for Gary Clark with the pass too high. And the Redskins will have to punt. Once again, the kind of play a quarterback has to make for you to be a winner. He has time. He has a receiver open. And actually, I think Gary Clark would catch that pass nine times out of ten or more often than that. That was a very catchable pass. He should have had it. So the Redskin punter, Greg Coleman, is on the field. His first one covered 45 yards. And McNeil standing back inside his 10. 13 and a half minutes left in the first half. No score. Good high punt from Coleman. McNeil calls for a fair catch and takes it at the 11. So the Browns are backed up after a 43-yard punt from Coleman. We'll be right back. Washington, D.C., 13-19 left in the second quarter. No score. The Browns and the Redskins. Cleveland with the first down at its own 11. Kevin Mack pounds straight ahead, just short of the 15-yard line. Let's go back to NFL Live now and check in with punster Bob Costas. Thank you, Mr. Hammond. We told you about Buffalo's goal line stand, but the Bengals came right back on their next possession. Here's James Brooks, four-yard sweep, 12th touchdown of the year. Then they get the ball back. Here's Esiason rolling left. He hits Brooks, speeds past the linebacker. Another touchdown for Brooks. 25th touchdown pass of the year for Esiason. Tops in the league. Back to RFK. Bad news for Cleveland Brown fans as the Bengals take a 14-0 lead. Browns in the skin, scoreless. 12.40 left in the second quarter. Second and six for the Cleveland Browns. Gosar dumps it short, complete to Biner, who burrows ahead to the 20-yard line, short of the first down. Neil Oklowitz pins him right at the 20. Well, I want to tell you something. Wilbur Marshall ends up making a tackle on his play, but what Marshall does first is he takes away the deep pass right now to Langhorn. He gets back in that zone. Now he comes up and makes the tackle short of the first down. Marshall's been playing well. I mean, he's been a good find. He's made more first hits for this defense than any other player on the team. He's made more tackles this season than he has in any of his other uh, seasons. He's having a good first year with a new defense. And plenty of incentive. He's a rich young man now. That helps. Third and one for the Browns from their own 20-yard line. Mac, he's got the first down. He falls forward. Got a couple of yards enough to keep the drive going for the Cleveland Browns. 
Dean Hamill made the stop for the Redskins. Well, the offensive line, defensive line, that's where the games are usually won and lost. On the right side, you see Dan Fike, 69 and 63, the right tackle, Cody Rise. It opened up that hole right now for Mac. These are the guys that they do the work right there in the pits. And quarterbacks, halfbacks, wide receivers, believe me, folks, we all appreciate the work those <laughs> linemen do. Or don't do, as the case may be. <laughs> In fact, Bernie Kosar bought his offensive lineman each a case of champagne to show his appreciation. Biner is in motion. Kosar hits Biner in the flat. Collision at the 26-yard line, and Biner is stopped there. Went for five yards on the play as Barry Wilburn came up to stop Biner after the short completion. Alvin Walton was there, too. Smart decision by Kozar to go to Biner that time. Once again, his receiver downfield was covered, and Kozar sees that. He wants to get the ball downfield to his deep receiver, but it's not there. So, all right, Bernie says, I'll come to the short guy. Now we have some rain, and uh, this very well could affect the passing game. The ball should get slick. Second down for Kozar. straight ahead carries Redskins with him to the 35 yard line a Brown first down Neil Okowitz finally tied his legs up to get him down with help from Daryl Grant yeah but when you see a big back break through a hole that cleanly you know one of the big boys or two of them up front did a job guard number 70 Larry Williams and center Ricosi opened up a huge hole right there in the middle left side of the line and Okowitz doesn't like to see that big fullback coming clean I can promise you that folks in fact, a Mac with those big shoulder pads is an intimidating presence as he comes at you, like a big Brahma bull. The rain coming down harder now. First and ten, Browns at the 34. Kozar lofts it up. Fontenot can't get there. Wilbur Marshall was coming that time, Joe, but the Browns reacted and stopped him, picked him up. And the Browns are doing a good job with their play selection. Here, number 58 tries to get to the passer, but they'll have nothing of it. That's that's Ricky Bolton, number 77, seven, keeping him out of there. Kozar once again getting time. Now, he has isolation over there, and Alvin Walton, a strong safety with Langhorne. So Bernie is hoping. He said, come on, Langhorne, get to it, buddy. You can beat that strong safety. He did beat him, but the pass was off its mark. Second and ten, Kozar. Look at the rain on his helmet. Mack. Good spin move by Mack. Shakes another tackler. Still going. He's got a first down. Great run by Kevin Mack. It went for 12 yards. That's what the Cleveland Browns have been missing, folks. That big back right there, Kevin Mack, their best runner. You may not always get a clean hole, but if you have a back that's this strong, he can bounce off tacklers, run through them, through Olkowitz's tackle. He sheds another with an Elvin Walton. Number 40 can't make the play. That's just terrific running. Barry Wilburn finally was able to get him to the ground. You could figure that's terrific running, Tom, or you could say it's poor tackling. I don't know which. <laughs> They're number 58, Wilbur Marshall, one of the best misses a tackle. Mack has carried eight times for 40 yards, averaging five yards a pop. Kosar sidearms it complete to the 40-yard line. Fontenot has spun down there after making the first down grab. Todd Bowles able to stop him, but 15 yards, and Kosar has the game going now. Hitting on the runs to Mack and the passes that time to Fontenot. 14-0 Cincinnati. I know the home field is an advantage in both of these teams, Cincinnati, Buffalo. They'd love to have that advantage throughout the playoffs. And here at RFK, nothing, nothing. 7:55 remaining in the second quarter. Browns have a first down at the Washington 39-yard line. Kozar again, good protection. Biner has it, short gain inside the 35 to the 34-yard line. Neil Okowitz stopped him, a gain of five. Once again, Kozar gets very good blocking back there. He couldn't get this ball out to Langhorn as much as he wanted to. You see, he doesn't quite 
get away from the defender right here. I'd say that it could be construed as defensive holding by Barry Wilburn, but uh, once again, it went undetected by the official. There's Bernie Kozar, who comes off a great game against Pittsburgh a week ago, his best performance since returning from injury. Off to a good start today, second and five. the blitz and Kosar is spun down third sack of the day for the Redskins breaking through was Mal Kaufman one of the linebackers he came on the blitz and got Kosar for a nine yard loss the third quarterback sack well Washington hasn't been getting the kind of pressure they want and here you see number 55 blitzing to the inside they figure they've got to send those linebackers to get more pressure back there on Kosar and that's just what happened that time. Mel Kaufman came clean and got to Kozar before he could get it off. Well, Joe Gibbs said the big play had been missing from his team, and Kaufman celebrates after that sack as the defense comes up with a big play. It sets Cleveland back to a third and 14. Kozar down again. Fourth sack for the Redskins. Wilbur Marshall was first to arrive on the scene, number 58. That one went for minus 11. Marshall, and then he gets some help from Dean Hamill, number 78 also. You see the outside pressure. Now, Kozar would like to step up, but he can't go anywhere up front because Dean Hamill, number, seven, number 68, has beaten the offensive lineman there. Here's the punt. Taken right at the sideline and out of bounds at about the 13 or 14 yard lines. The Redskins will have a lot of territory to cover. Scoreless in the second. There's a new in love. By authority of the National Football League and intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or rather use of the telecast without the express written consent of the Washington Redskins and the National Football League is prohibited. This game the property of the NFL, the Washington Redskins and Cleveland Browns, all rights reserved. Rippon looks one way, fires the other, and it's complete to the 20 yard line. He got seven yards on the play. As Craig McEwen gathered in the pass from Rippon. Rippon impresses me with his calmness back there in the pocket. His first receiver is covered, so he doesn't throw the ball. He looks for a secondary receiver. He's cool enough to come to him. Right now, what Rippon is uh, having a problem with, or what the Redskins may have a problem with, is this offensive line. Mark May has left the game with an injury. The uh, right guard, Bostic the center, is out of the game. So we have two new guys in the game, McKenzie and R.C. Thielman. And uh, this offensive line is continuing uh, to get hurt and play inconsistently. We'll be right back after these words. Reception a little shaken up being uh, tested over on the uh, Redskins sideline. Meanwhile, number 73, Mark May, with a bruised left leg, is back in the game. Second and three. Washington has rushed the ball seven times, passed six. This one on the ground, Morris. Hit just as he received the handoff and stopped for no gain. Jamie Morris has found the going a little tough today. The Cleveland defense ready for him, led by David Grayson. Well, David Grayson, the linebacker that time, gets across the line of scrimmage. Here you see 73 blocking on Golik, the nose tackle. May does a good job, came back from the x-rays. They were negative, so he's all right. But uh, Dave Grayson, the linebacker for Cleveland, made a good play that time, stuffing the run. Jamie Morris has carried seven times for 26 yards. Third and four coming up for the Browns. The ball at the, say for the Redskins, excuse me, third and four for the Redskins at their own 19. Rippon's pass complete. The catch made by Clark, and Gary Clark has a first down up to the 35-yard line. Hanford Dixon finally made the stop after a 16-yard gain. Well, Clark has a lot of speed. He's the quickest of the receivers anyway, and he just outruns Stephen Braggs, number 36. Here to the left of your screen, perfect shot right now. I mean, the ball was right on target by Rippon, and a good gainer. Gary Clark, who played in the Pro Bowl the last two years, was the third leading receiver in all of the NFL a year ago. First catch of the game today. And he has two in a row. Clark takes this one. 
He got seven or eight yards on the play. Again, Hanford Dixon on the tackle for Cleveland with David Grayson helping out. It goes for eight. Still 14 nothing. The Bengals over the Bills. Kansas City got on the board against Pittsburgh. And Atlanta still with a field goal lead. Here in the rain at RFK Stadium, nothing, nothing. 350 remaining in the first half. Rippin hands to Morris. Morris again hit and dropped at the 40-yard line. Mike Johnson arrived about the same time as the football, and Morris gets very little. But well, Cleveland's forcing Washington into a passing situation again. Mike Johnson, the leading tackler on this Cleveland bunch, will just fight through there and not give Morris really a chance to get going. Jamie, <laughs> he thought he saw a hole, but Johnson was right there. You know, with this rain right now, I got to believe it's going to affect the defense a little bit. The pass rush, they won't be able to come out of the blocks as quickly. And these quarterbacks, they play such a tight bump and run, they're liable to slip and fall. It's wet out there. Third and two, the Redskins not able to rush the ball today. So Rippon, oh, a great catch, then it comes loose, incomplete. I thought Clark had it for a moment as he made a diving stab at it, but he couldn't hold on. He had beaten Will Hill and Stephen Braggs on the play. Well, Rippon gets pretty good protection and comes to the right receiver. I'll tell you, that is good coverage by Stephen Braggs right now. That ball had to be just right, and it was a good effort by Clark, but I'd have to give Braggs the credit for good coverage on that play. Fourth down, and Greg Coleman on the field to punt. Coleman averaging 40 yards a kick. He'll try this one in the rain, and McNeil will try to field it in the showers back at the 20. Three minutes left in the second quarter. Another good kick by Coleman. McNeil at the 21. Trying to get outside. Pushed out of bounds. They'll mark it just short of the 30-yard line. A 38-yard punt and a 9-yard return by McNeil. Well, this is an interconference game, and over the years, the AFC holding the edge, which has to make you proud, Joe. Well, I think it makes Commissioner Roselle even prouder. You know, they've been shooting for parity in the league, and they wanted an even kill for the fans. You know, no dominant teams, and that's what we're seeing. We don't have a dominant conference. We've had a couple of dominant Super Bowl winners the last few years. This magic number we see, three, means that if the AFC wins three more games, that'll be 27 victories, and that's at least 500 for the season. They can't uh, lose to the NFC Conference. This is the first time Cleveland has played at RFK Stadium since 1971, and a pretty good shower for their efforts here. There's Kozar in that straddle lineup under the uh, center that he has made so familiar. Ozar shoots it complete over on the sideline, and the catch made by Ozzie Newsom. Newsom keeps his string alive. He's now made a catch in 140 straight games, which is second in the NFL behind Steve Largent. It went for five yards, but Newsom has the catch and keeps the string going. Well, there's not a lot to this pattern. Ozzy goes over there to the sideline, and if somebody doesn't come up on him, which they don't, Kozar finds him smartly. Ozzy and I both were crying a little bit last night since our alma mater, Alabama, took it on the chin <laughs> from Auburn. Well, he wants the Super Bowl ring that you have on your finger, Joe. And it is a thrill, that's for sure. All-time leading pass-catching tight end in NFL history. Draw play. Max stumbles, gets up again. And is across the 40. He might have gotten the first down on second effort. About six yards on the play. You see, that's the difference between professional running backs and pretty good running backs who don't quite make it. Mac has a hole. He gets tripped up and falls down. But he doesn't quit there. He gets up. He fights for more yardage. And by gosh, he finds the first down marker. Good second and third effort by Mac. And another illustration of what he means to this football team. Back in action today after missing two games, the last two. Approaching the two-minute warning here in a scoreless first half. I don't think the Browns will get the playoff. Yes, they do. And it is Mack. Straight up the middle to midfield and close to another first down. Nine yards. It'll be just about a foot short of the first down. A minute 57 left in the first half. The Redskins and the Browns locked in a scoreless tie. At Riverfront. And the Cleveland Brown fans hate to hear that. 
And their Brownies right now tied with the Redskins. Nothing, nothing. A minute 57 remaining in the first half of play. Kevin Mack has outgained the entire Redskin team. Nearly 2-1. to one. 54 yards to 27. He's on the sideline here. Blitz comes. Kozar gets rid of it. And the Browns have another first down. The reception made by Reggie Langhorn. It goes for 10 yards. And he's to the 40 of the Redskins. Barry Wilburn stopped Langhorn after he picked up 10. Oh, I like Coach Schottenheimer's call that time, Tom. He saw the blitz coming, so he had to pass play on a quick one to Langhorn. He's not afraid to throw the ball. Of course, in that situation, he had second and less than a yard. He probably figured he could come back and get it on third down if the ball were incomplete anyway. Langhorn has made three receptions for 39 yards. Clock continues to tick away. Remember, Kosar used one timeout in the first half when he was about to be caught by the 45-second clock. Again, the blitz. And again, Kosar unloads it. It'll be incomplete, but he got rid of it and avoided the fifth sack of the day. Brian Brennan was the intended receiver, and Manley was closing in on Kosar. Well, this is the thing. You don't have to get credited for a sack, but if you can hurry the quarterback, force him to throw when he doesn't want to, right here, well, <laughs> more times than not, that ball is going to be un incomplete, and Kozar is going to start to feel that pain that Manley is administering in that fourth <laughs> quarter and the third quarter. The more times you hit that quarterback, I tell you, the less effective he's going to be that second half. Second and ten for the Browns. Ball at the 40-yard line of the Redskins. Draw play. Biner inside the 30. He's got a Cleveland first down. Wilbur Marshall finally smelled the play and stopped him, but the draw to Biner goes for good yardage. And Cleveland takes a timeout, stopping the clock with 102 left in the half. Gardner and Frank DeFord bringing you up to date on all the scores and giving you the highlights. And Frank DeFord is going to have a halftime feature regarding that home field advantage, Buffalo or Cincinnati, that you were talking about earlier, Joe, and to be very significant. And I think uh, a lot of teams are worrying about having to go to Buffalo to play late in the year. Yeah, well, I don't know they're worried so much about that weather at Buffalo or they're worried about the <laughs> Buffalo defense. I'd be more concerned with that Buffalo football team than I would the weather. Big disparity in first downs, as you saw, in favor of the Browns, who have one here at the Redskin 28. Kosar complete. Right across the middle to the 25-yard line. Brian Brennan got only three on the pass completion. As the clock ticks down inside 50 seconds. They don't seem to be in a great hurry. Kozar swings it to Biner. Biner out of bounds. He stops the clock. I think he's short of the first down. He got five yards. And Alvin Walton made sure Biner went out, but it stops the clock with 34 ticks left. Ernest Binder was leading the team in rushing and pass receiving coming into the game. And hey, Tom, I have to do it. You know, he wanted me to say happy birthday to his six-year-old daughter, Samira. She's at home with his wife, Tina, and his other daughter, Adrian Monique. So Ernest sends his love and says, happy birthday, Samira. <laughs> 34 seconds left in the half, third and two. That was a nice little Thanksgiving message. Kosar almost fumbled the ball, and then he just kills the clock. Kosar fumbled the exchange, the ball probably wet, and he saw that the pressure was moving in on him and just threw it to the ground to kill the clock, which yeah. is legal. Yeah, but it's not legal once you start to drop back and pass. No, this should not be a clock play. It's not a clock play, and it could be intentional grounding very easily. You have to clearly start throwing that ball in the ground as soon as you get it from your center. One step. Otherwise, it's an attempted pass. So once you're backpedaling uh, to get into the pocket, uh, it is intentional grounding. Well, not called, so Barr is on to attempt a field goal from 37 yards. He missed a 37-yarder in the first quarter. But this one is good. 
So Matt Barr hits from 37 yards for the first points of the game, and it comes with 27 seconds remaining. There is a flag down. Number 28. Offside against the Redskins, so the points stand. Well, it gives them a first down. Uh, I would be a little bit greedy myself with a quarterback like Kozar and 27 seconds uh, left to work. I'd, I'd take the penalty and try and give it a couple more shots. If I have a young quarterback, maybe like Rippon in this situation, I might go ahead and keep the field goal. I think Marty Schottenheimer said no. We'll leave the points up on the board. <laughs> he might be thinking about what happened last week or the week before when they didn't get those three points at the end of the first half. And maybe thinking about a wet football and so on and not wanting to risk it. So he leaves the three points on the board and the Browns have the first lead of the game with 27 seconds left in the first half. Let's see Bernie Kosar kill the clock again. And is this a legal play or not Joe. Well, it's a judgment call. I, it's my interpretation that he needs to start throwing the ball into the ground as soon as he gets possession of it. You look at it here, he's looking downfield. He is not intentionally stopping the clock to start with. Now, you're supposed to do that right away. When you get the ball, you have to give indication right away that it's the clock play. You want to stop the pass. He was looking downfield. It turns into a field goal for the Cleveland Browns, however. And so Cleveland bidding for its first shutout of a team in the first half this season. They've done it uh, six times in the second half, but never have they shut out a team in the first half this season. You know, I always like to see a team perform well in the second half. That tells me that they could either have their backs against the wall or a lead, but they come out in the second half fighting. It shows me good coaching, too coaching at halftime and making adjustments on how to stop the opposition or move the ball yourself in the second half. Second half stats I like. Mars kickoff squibs downfield. Sanders picks it up on the hop at the five yard line. Trying to get to the outside then cuts back and takes it just short of the 30. Finally stopped by Weathers. It went for 24 yards by Ricky Sanders on the return. 22 seconds left, and the Browns should be used to this kind of weather. This is the same sort of uh, weather they faced in Cleveland against the uh, Steelers a week ago. Yep. You know, uh, right now with 22 seconds left, uh, they probably won't go for the long ball with the kind of spectacular receivers that Washington has. I'd be tempted to go deep. Cleveland doesn't have the timeouts left. Even if they intercept the ball downfield, Cleveland won't be able to, to get in field goal position. So I'd like to see him go deep. Instead, they hand off. <laughs> <laughs> well, the fans didn't agree either. <laughs> I'm glad to hear that someone else doesn't agree with me, I mean, or at least with the coaching system. You know, you're 0 for 2. You didn't think Schottenheimer would take the field goal either. I hate to point that out to you. Hey, I, I want to point something else out. Did Washington just call a timeout? Why would they run the ball and then stop the clock with a timeout? Oh, boy, they know more about it than we do, Tom, and I'm afraid they know something I don't know. I would have been trying to get over top on that first play I guess maybe uh, he was looking to break the run and then use up some of the time and come back with the long bomb I'm really not sure that make much sense the uh, Redskins are one of the worst rushing teams in the NFL 24th and they haven't been able to rush the ball successfully today they rush it and then call a timeout well even today they've had to shuffle that offensive line around again before this game they had five different lineups today they've had to shuffle it it's inconsistent offensive line play 20th play of the first half up for the Redskins. And maybe the final one. Rippon does go deep. And it is intercepted. Intercepted by Minifield. He tried to lateral it. I don't know if they're going to allow that or not. They're going to mark it down. But the interception was made by Frank Minifield. That is his fourth interception of the season. Well, I'm glad to see they went for it anyway. They had a one-on-one -on -one situation. Minifield made the play. One of the best corners in the league, if not the very best cornerback, number 31. Coach Schottenheimer says he's having a terrific year. Right now, he's step for step all the way with Young, or rather with uh, Sanders. And he just beats it to the ball. A good play by Frank Minifield. <laughs> then he tried to lateral it. <laughs> he wants to lateral it. He wants to get a touchdown going. Great, great play by Frank Minifield. 
First turnover of the game goes Cleveland's way. Just two seconds left. And they'll kill the clock. Get some points with the running game. But the running game of Cleveland has afforded Kozar some better time. He's able to mix the play-action stuff in because Washington has to respect the running game. So the play-action passes are good. They haven't been as good for Washington because right now Cleveland's not respecting Washington's running attack. But well, this is fun, isn't it? In the rain at RFK Stadium, <laughs> the Browns and the Redskins just makes me think of old-time football. The defense is dominating. This is the way it's supposed to be, isn't it? Yes, this is the way it's supposed to be. And I remember my days, we never had a pretty green field like that to play on. We had that old state Shea Stadium baseball infield. This field's holding up rather well right now. Mark Rippon is hit on 5 of 10 for 56 yards and had that one interception just with two seconds left in the first half. Doug Williams, on the other hand, on the sideline for the Redskins today, last week hit on 27 of 41. That was against the... Here's a little bit here. Take the truck. Get him up. Just get him. Two picked off, so... Coach Gibbs told us yesterday he thought that Williams was just a little banged up, that he wasn't really 100%, that he needed a breath of fresh air, as he said, and he is on the sideline today. And not much of a quarterback controversy here, though, because Rippon and Williams uh, get along very well, and Williams seemed to be taking his demotion well. Well, he likes his job here at Washington. He likes the team that he's on. And in defense of Doug, not that he really needs it, but, you know, they're playing catch-up football these last few weeks. And three of the four losses, they've fallen behind team. So Doug Williams has been forced to throw more often than he'd like. And uh, the teams have played good defense. I tell you, when you know a team has to pass, you're going to play better defense against them. Mark Rippon on the sideline getting ready for the second half and he'll be on the field first because the Browns will kick off to the Redskins to open the second half of play. 3-0 Cleveland leading on a Matt Barr field goal from 37 yards away with 27 seconds left in the first half. Cleveland took the opening kickoff, marched all the way down the field, holding the ball nearly nine minutes but couldn't score. The first points not going on the board until 27 seconds were left. This kickoff sponsored by Budweiser, the king of beers. There you see uh, the receiving alignment for the Redskins with Ricky Sanders standing at about his five-yard line. Here's Barr's kickoff. Sanders gathers it in at the eight. And is tripped up beyond the 25, falls forward to the 27-yard line, hit by Braggs at that point. A 19-yard return by Sanders. So Mark Rippon hitting on 50% of his passes today for the season, 57%. He has thrown 15 touchdown passes, seven interceptions. He's also the number four rusher on this team, but did not have a particularly sparkling first half. Spot the ball at the 27. Morris is the setback. The handoff. And again, the Redskins find the going tough on the ground against this Cleveland defense. Bob Golick and Carl Hairston put the clamps on Morris after he gained a couple. Carl Hairston, boy, he's another old timer. He and Butts, those guys I played against both of them way back when I was playing. Hairston, of course, is in his 13th year out of Maryland East Shore. He's been a little banged up. They have him back in the lineup this week and uh, Big Carl is just doing a good 13 years of playing defensive end, buddy. That's a tough job. Last week, he missed the first game since 1979, only the second of his 13-year career. Second and eight. Rippon floats it complete. Made uh, The catch made by Art Monk and out of bounds just beyond the first down marker. Hanford Dixon was covering Monk, but he picked up nine yards on the reception from Rippon. Well, the offensive line of Washington gave Rippon plenty of time to come to Monk. Once again, the Cleveland secondary takes away the first receiver that Rippon would like to look for. You'll see Rippon looking downfield and then go over to Monk late. But that's good pass protection there, buddy. First catch Real for Monk good. today. And his 52nd of the season, he's the second leading receiver. He had nine against San Francisco last week. Morris across the 40 to the 42-yard line. He picked up four on that play. Grayson and Washington combined on the hit for Cleveland. And Grayson, the leading tackler in the first half, 
for the Cleveland Browns with four hits in the first half of play. Walton led Washington with seven. Second and six. Cleveland leading Washington 3 nothing. Opening moments of the third quarter in a rainstorm at RFK in Washington, D.C. Play action pass. Rippon picks out a secondary receiver and completes the pass to Terry Orr. And Orr has the Redskin first down close to midfield. He picked up eight yards. Mike Junkin and Hanford Dixon finally got Terry Orr to the ground. Rippon is cool. He can't find his receiver, and he's able to come off the tour once again to Orr. But watch his pass protection. Little play action fake. I don't know whether that just held the line or this huge offensive line of Washington is doing a great job of pass protection. Of course, Bob Gulley gets there a little late. Rippon does complete it, though. First catch of the day for Orr, his fifth of the season. At midfield. Rippon again has a man wide open. Sanders makes the catch, and he is close to the 40-yard line and close to a first down. Minifield and Washington covering on the play, nine or ten yards. It depends on the spot, and it looks like in the second half, the Redskins now going almost exclusively to the pass. Well, I think it's a good decision. They haven't been able to maintain any kind of ground game. Once again, it's terrific offensive blocking. And here you see Ricky Sanders. He's able to get away from Minifield because it's wet out there. Minifield tried to react, but he slipped a little bit and couldn't come out of his cut. Got nine yards at second and one at the Cleveland 41-yard line. Morris hit, but manages to fall forward and pick up the first down. Good running that time by the rookie from Michigan, the fourth-round draft choice. Johnson and Washington put the hit on him, but he managed to fall forward for the Redskin first down. You know this guy's tough, Jamie Morris. I mean, he played four years up there in Michigan under Bo Schembechler, and everyone <laughs> that's a football fan knows that old coach Schembechler doesn't take any fooling around. Big difference for Jamie Morris, I asked him the other day, is having to block those huge linebackers and read the blitzes, as well as going out for passes. He didn't do much of that in Michigan. Hate to bring this up, but he had a record 234 yards on the ground against your alma mater, Alabama, in the Hall of Fame Bowl earlier this year. There he is again. Took a good hit. Took a couple of them to get him down. Mike Johnson and Felix Wright. Five yards on the game to Jamie Morris, and suddenly the running game looks better for the Redskins. Jamie Morris is strong, folks. He's only 5'7", but he has 188 pounds of muscle on that body, and he's as quick as a hiccup. He can jump around and tackle, boy, dart in and out of holes. And being 5'7", it's very difficult for the linebackers, the defensive backs, to find him when he's running behind that huge offensive line. And that's what he said yesterday. He thought being 5'7 was an advantage, that I can hide behind those big linemen. Second and five. Rippon's got a man wide open, complete inside the 10. It's Sanders that makes the catch, and he's got a first down for the Redskins inside the 10-yard line of the Browns, 29-yard gain. Brian Washington finally was able to get Sanders out of bounds, but he was wide open, well, he 25. Was, he, was, he was wide open, Tom, because Cleveland did something uncharacteristic. They went to a zone defense. Here you see Dixon, 29, nowhere near the receiver. Number 48, Brian Washington, getting there later. Cleveland, instead of playing their typical man-for-man -man dog defense, went to a zone that time, and it hurt him. So a 25-yard gain, first and goal from the seven. Best drive of the day for the Redskins. Rippon throws it incomplete. Monk was in the end zone and appeared to be behind the defense, and the ball just came off Rippon's hand, funny Joe. He wasn't sure where he wanted to go with that one. He looked to the right and tried to find somebody open, but nothing was there. I think he was intending to throw it away. 21-7, Cincinnati over Buffalo, and Phoenix leading Philadelphia, 14-7. Important games for fans of the Browns and the Redskins. Second and goal for the Redskins from the Browns' seven-yard line. 3-0 Cleveland, 11-04, third quarter. Griffin chased. Dumps it off, and it'll be incomplete. Orr was juggling it and couldn't find the handle. Terry Orr had it in his hand. 
legs and just bobbled it away. <laughs> Had he held on to this ball, he might have been able to get it into the end zone. Once again, Cleveland's pass defense is showing off a bit back there. There's not a receiver to be found, and Rippin is getting a little nervous. Finds Orr over here, and then Orr just can't quite control the ball. Already, the Redskins are closing in on their first half passing yardage. Third and goal from the seventh. Rippon drills it. Touchdown. Gary Clark with a touchdown catch. Seven yards out, and the Redskins take the lead. Good pass protection for Rippon once again. He's able to find Gary Clark in a soft spot in the zone, and he drilled that ball right on the numbers of Gary Clark. Washington very impressive on its opening drive in the second half, and Chip Lowmiller is on to try to make it 7-3. Coleman, the putter, holds. And the kick is good. This in the world, yours. Tom Hammond and Joe Namath at RFK Stadium. Low Miller's kick bounds into the end zone for the touchback. It's covered by Young there, and the Browns will have it with a first down at their 20. Let's take a look at the touchdown again. Well, once again, it's just excellent pass protection by that front wall of the Washington Redskins, and Rippin is right on target. Look at that ball. It had a lot of heat on it. Defenders didn't have a chance to get to it, and Clark, well, I guess he was kind of protecting himself, too, by making that catch. You mentioned uh, earlier about the great man coverage of the Cleveland secondary, and they were burned a couple of times when they went to zone during that drive. Right, the big pass play down the sideline to Sanders, I believe, and on this last touchdown to Clark, they were in uh, zone coverage both times. First down, Cleveland from their own 20-yard line. Redskins leading it now, 7-3. First possession of the second half for Cleveland. Kozar checks off. The crowd really getting into it. And the handoff is to Kevin Mack, who only got a couple of yards. Dave Butts right in the middle of the line stacked it up. The crowd helps so much. I know when I, you're out in that field and you hear the roar of your home crowd behind you, buddy, that adrenaline just starts pumping some more. Number 65, Dave Butts, in his 15th year. I mean, he is tough. I asked him if he's going to play anymore after this year. He said, Joe, I'm only worried about tomorrow. I'm worried about the next five games after this. I feel great. I do everything in the weight room. My body's in great shape. 38 years old, the oldest starter in the NFL. In fact, Don Strzok, the backup quarterback of the Browns, is also 38 today. Second and nine. Gozar's pass incomplete. Over the head of the intended receiver, Ernest Biner. And Bernie Kosar is now 25 years old. He had a birthday Friday. <laughs> 25. It, it seems Kosar has been around for more, <laughs> longer than that, right? He was a little off target on that last pass. Biner was open, but Bernie got it over his head. I don't know whether that ball is slick right now. You'd think it should be a little bit slick for the passers, as hard as it's raining. One more birthday, and then I'll shut up about him. Joe Gibbs had his birthday <laughs> Friday, the same day as Kozar. Third and nine for Cleveland. Kozar scrambles. It's taken down. The ball came loose, but I don't think uh, anyone saw it. And it nestled right next to Kozar. And he may have been down already anyway. Hamill and Vaughn tackle Kozar for a loss of five, the fifth Redskins sack of the day. Well, Wilbur Marshall rushes from this side, number 58. Clarence Vaughn, 31, makes the play, the safety from the right side. Now the ball is loose, and it's just setting there, folks. I don't know. I'd like to see that again <laughs> sometime, whether that ball is a live ball or not. I mean, it was just sitting on the ground. Punt coming up from Runniger. Out 
of bounds at about the 10 yard line. Well, Joe, <laughs> you had been talking about the fact that the Redskins had not blocked a punt all season. I mean, we were shocked. The Redskins always have been known for their special teams. And with the rule change this year, only giving five yards to running into the punter, you'd think the Redskins would have some block punt. This week, they uh, told me that number 25, Oliphant, would be the man to designate to do it. Now, I don't know if this is, in fact, him. but It, it is. It, it is. sure Oliphant. is. He's the guy that gets in there. He's the one that they had this play designed for, and it worked. I think, right. I think you jogged Gibbs' brain on the, the other day and said, why haven't you had a block punt? Here he is right there, coming clean in the middle. Of course, Coach Gibbs said they've been putting on returns, et cetera, trying to get good runbacks is one of the reasons they didn't block one yet to this point. Redskins have it first and goal at the Cleveland 9. Morris takes some Cleveland players with him inside the five-yard line. Bob Golick was hanging on, so was Clay Matthews, but the little guy Morris kept the legs churning and got it inside the five-yard line. Uh, he followed in there behind Joe Jacoby and Mark May, and those fellas blew that defensive front off the line a little bit. Here's Runniger. He's not too happy with that block punt. I don't think any punters are ever happy when they get him blocked. He's probably trying to figure out what went wrong. The second punt he's had blocked this season. Second and goal from the four. Jamie Morris looked like his older brother Joe on that one, carrying the, red, the uh, Browns along with him. He gets it again. What's there this time, though? Maybe a yard to the three-yard line. Golick was ready for him. Bob Golick, who's been to the Pro Bowl the last three years, ready for the running play as we update the scores. Phoenix, I tell you, Cliff Stout must be doing a good job with those Cardinals over there at Philadelphia. Chicago still just up 7-0 on the Packers. Pittsburgh winning at home and Atlanta by a touchdown. Marty Schottenheimer in his defense hoping to hold the Redskins out of the end zone on third and goal from the three. Griffin for the corner knocked away at the last minute. Great defensive play again by the Browns. Felix Wright recovered to bat the ball away. Coach Schottenheimer pointed out that Felix Wright was having a Pro Bowl type season. I know Schottenheimer was happy to see him show up to break that pass up. But the problem here is Rippin's late getting the ball out there. The receiver's open. You see he's way out in front. Rippin was late coming to him. I don't know whether that's lack of practice with your first unit or what. But had Rippin got that ball released a little bit earlier, that could have been six. Low Miller will try the field goal from about 21 yards. From this range, he's hit six of seven. And it's good. 21-yard field goal by Low Miller ups the Washington lead. It's 10-3 Redskins. When it comes to TV. Well, games coming up next Sunday here on NBC. Buffalo at Tampa, Indianapolis at Miami, the Chargers at the Bengals, and Seattle at New England. And the late games, Denver at the Raiders, the Jets at Kansas City. Low Miller's kick, taken by Fontenot. Fontenot is buried at the 17-yard line. And now the Redskins special teams seem inspired, Joe. That blocked punt surely picked him up. Oh, and the house, too. I mean, the cheering from the fans, that's got to inspire the team. But... Redskins haven't been in this kind of position for a while. They have the lead now. The defense is playing well, and I'm sure Mark Rippon has to feel good with the lead. That's got to do something for his uh, confidence. But here's a guy right now, Bernie Kosar, one of the best in all the game, and being three points behind doesn't phase him one little bit. He's just going back to work. He'll start from his own 18-yard line. Kozar fires a bullet, and Brennan has it at the 30. It's Weathers, excuse me, Clarence Weathers with the reception for 13 yards. Darryl Green covering on the play, but Weathers made the catch, and the Browns quickly have a first down. Well, as fast as Darryl uh, Green is, once a receiver gets to the inside, it becomes a foot race uh, across the field. Here we see the 
good pass protection by Fair and Manley never gets into the play. In fact, it was good pass protection by that entire offensive unit. Bernie Kosar has the ball at his own 30, trailing 10-3, 7-15 in the third quarter. Kosar goes deep. Intercepted. Intercepted by Barry Wilbur. Wilburn makes the interception his second of the season. The man who led the league in interceptions with nine a year ago picks off his second, and the Redskins continue to have all the momentum at RFK. Bad Weathers deep, but he underthrew the pass, and Barry Wilburn outplays Weathers for the interception. I, well, we'll get to this play first, Tom. It is the Redskins with a first down at the 32. Jamie Morris carries straight ahead. David Grayson stopped him after a gain of five. I was going to say, I can't help but wondering if Kozar's, Kozar's arm is 100%. Now, I know he can throw the intermediate range passes, but that long bomb that you need to get the ball out there in front, I don't know if Bernie's arm is back to 100% from that earlier elbow injury. There's Kozar with a jacket on in the rain here at RFK. He injured that right elbow against Kansas City and was out six weeks. Morris finds the going a little tougher this time. He's met head on by Goldick and Hairston and thrown back. One of the big disappointments of the season for the Redskins has been their giveaway takeaway ratio. They always prided themselves on the way that they took the ball away from the opposition. In 83, they set a record with a plus 43. This was a shocking statistic to me. Their rank of 26th in the NFL coming into today's game. Yeah, well, they've done a good job today so far. You know, this statistic is an important stat next to winning and losing. I think the most important stat. They gave the ball away 15 times in the last three losses. They have a third and four here off an interception, off a takeaway. Rippon stands in the pocket and then short hops the intended receiver. It'll be incomplete. Intended for Clark. And the Skins will have to punt it. Greg Coleman will come on to punt as we check the ticker. And the Bengals still with a 14-point lead. Phoenix on the road. Miami and the Jets have tightened up a bit. So have Tampa Bay and Atlanta. Here's Coleman, and McNeil will receive the punt. Looks like the Redskins get nothing out of that takeaway as their punt formation. No wind to speak of here today. McNeil lets it bounce, then he tries to take it and is buried. Cleveland will have the ball at about the 24-yard line. When we come back, 38-yard punt. It takes time to get your gas to see the light. It takes time. It isn't always love at sight. From the boy's little glance, till she's ready for romance. Remember, little man, it takes time. It takes time to make the coffee boy go late. It takes time to get your gas to set the date. From the boy's moonlit wall, till you get the baby talk. The Elegance Collection man, from Citizen. Time. Yeah. Betty Jean, I'm sorry about last night. Open up. <laughs> she, she's always joking. I don't hear laughing. Hey, Alice. I got Chinese. From Wingley's. I hear you breathing, honey. That's a good sign. New oh, shoe Alice, pork. you're missing a good show. Mm, Egg. Where there's good food and good times, it's only natural. Natural light from Anheuser-Busch. Get to the good stuff. Cold natural light. Alice. Bingo. <laughs> Need help? Yeah, and I've got 10 minutes to get to the radio station. Ah, here's the problem. Stetson Cologne. Easy to wear, hard to resist. And for that great smelling guy who started my car, I get off at 6. This is not the time to learn that all antifreezes aren't the same. What's in your radiator? Come on, answer. The game's high rollers.
America's top bowlers. In a high-stakes showdown. Lisa Wagner. Earl Anthony. Mark Roth. And Marshall Holman. Together, they're the game's 10-pin Terminators. The Bowling Shootout. Next Saturday, only on NBC. Tom Hammond and Joe Namath, one of only a handful who are warm and dry here at RFK Stadium this afternoon. As the rain continues to come down, at least the temperature is not too bad. But it's been steadily raining since about the second quarter. Ball at the 24-yard line. Cleveland has a first down at that point. Trailing 10-3 and five and a half minutes left in the third quarter. Kozar has good protection. Completes it to Fontenot. He's to the 30 and across to the 31-yard line. He got about six or seven yards on the play. Mel Kaufman recovered to make the tackle after the gain of seven. I'll tell you, the defense of the Redskins has to love this position they're in now. They've been behind so many games, and they've had such poor field position. With this lead, the defense has got to feel mighty good. They're playing a soft zone defense. They're going to force Kozar to put together a lot of little passes to make this drive. Second and three for the Browns. Takes a couple of tacklers still going beyond the 40 yard line and a Cleveland first down. Alvin Walton was hanging on for dear life as Mack chugged upfield. Well, the running game, if Cleveland can get it going, here you see Marshall number 58 try and make the play, but Biner effectively takes Marshall out of the play and Mack is able to make a good run. Ernest Biner does more than just catch and run, he's a good blocker as well. From the 42-yard line. Cleveland trying to dry, mount a drive here to tie the game. Mack hit, dropped at the 40. Loss on the play. Dexter Manley stopped him for a loss of two. And Manley makes the play. I mean, he might have gotten credit for the tackle by sticking his arm out and trapping him. But Daryl Grant, number 77 right there, is the one that disrupted the blocking scheme of the Redskins. When you get a defensive tackle like Grant or Butts that's able to get penetration into that backfield, that fouls up the blocking scheme, and it forces the quarterback to stay back. He can't step up into the pocket. A good play by Daryl Grant that time. Second and 12 for the Browns. Dexter Manley had a little holiday message from Pete Rozelle, didn't he? <laughs> Said, cool it a little bit, Dexter. Gozar across the middle, wide open and complete. And the ball is to Langhorn, who has another Cleveland first down. That one went for 16 yards to the 45-44 of the Redskins. Mel Kaufman recovered. But Langhorn was wide open. Well, he's going to come from the bottom right of the screen, and he's just going to find a dead spot inside of Wilbur Marshall there and short of Volkowitz, right there in the middle. Kozar finds him smartly. Once again, Kozar had good pass protection. You give any one of these quarterbacks time to throw, well, someone with Kozar's anticipation especially, and they're going to move the ball on you. 18 of 28 for Kozar, and Langhorn having another good day. Langhorn has the five longest scoring plays for the Browns this season. Kozar's in trouble. He's dropped back at the 45-yard line. Dexter Manley breathing down his neck. Sixth sack of the day for the Redskins and number two for Manley. Dexter said, yeah, I hope somebody's watching me. I hope they're all watching me because I'm going to get a sack. <laughs> Dexter with all of his speed. He's on the left side of your screen, and he beats number 74, Paul Fair, and he just stands him up and then runs right around him with that brilliant speed. Dexter having a good year, but sometimes he says, people, I feel like people are picking on me. <laughs> yeah. I said, like, could it be some of the things you do, Dexter? 6'3", <laughs> 257 with a mean disposition, and they're picking on him. Second down, about 20 yards to go. Again, Kozar in trouble, but he steps up and delivers a strike. It's complete to Weathers. He's at the 35-yard line, about a yard short of the first down. It covered 19 yards. 
Brilliant pass protection up there, affording Cozart a chance to step up. Now you see Weathers here with Daryl Green, and he's just going to jump inside of him with that pass protection. He just runs away from Green, and Cozart gets it to him. But again, the key is affording Cozart a place to move, Tom, to step up away from Dexter Manley's rush and Charles Mann's rush from the outside. They kept the center open for him all day, haven't they? Yes, so they he have. is able to step up and deliver it. It's third and about two yards here. I formation in the backfield. Mack, he's got the first down and more, almost to the 30-yard line. Alvin Walton, the strong safety, had to come up to stop Mack, who not only picked up the first down, but gained five yards on the play. Well, Mack got a good hole over there. Some blocking from the right side. Cody, Cody Risen and Dan Fike, you see on the top of the screen, they just get a body, and there's a nice, nice body on each guy, and there's a nice crack in there for Biner to get through, and <laughs> Walton had his hands full, I believe, trying to bring Mack down. Fike, 6'7", 280 pounds. Ryzen, 6'7", 280. A weighty issue as Fike and Butts, the earth moves when those two collide. <laughs> From the 31, a first down for the Browns. Kosar hits Langhorn. Stopped in his tracks. He gained one, maybe two yards. Wilbur Marshall was ready for that one and immediately pounced on him. And now they say for no gain. Well, that's Wilbur Marshall, all Wilbur Marshall. He could he could drop back and take away that short hook pattern downfield, and he can close so quickly on the receiver for a no-gainer. And that's the end of the third quarter with a score. The Redskins 10, the Browns 3. We'll be Ford Ranger is the number one selling compact pickup in America. Ford F-Series is the number one selling full-size pickup in America. In fact, five of America's 10 best-selling cars and trucks are Ford. I drive a Ford that represents, in my mind, the quality in its field. Off-road performance series goes all the way. Highlights and high jinks from the world of sports Tuesday at six and eleven. About ready to start the fourth quarter and through three, Joe. The Browns continue to dominate the stats, though they trail on the scoreboard. Yeah, that's where the important stat is, that score. And right now the, the Redskins have that seven-point lead. They played a good game so far. They have the only turnover they had was there at the end of the first half, whenever they just threw the ball up for grabs, which was all right. So the Redskins are playing a solid game. Tom Hammond and Joe Namath at RFK Stadium. David Neal, our producer. Andy Rosenberg, our director. Joe Costanza is here on stats. We've got a good one. Start the fourth quarter. 10-3 Redskins. Second and nine for the Browns at the Washington 30. Those are almost fumbled the snap, but he managed to get it to the draw play to Mack, and Mack pounds ahead to the 15-yard line. Cleveland looking good. Let's check in with Bob Costas. No, Tom, this is a Madra shot, but the Dolphins are trailing the Jets 24-14 when the Dolphins score two touchdowns in 69 seconds. This is the first one. Marino finds Clayton on this 31-yard touchdown. Then seconds later, Clayton catches his second touchdown on the day. A great leaping catch gets into the end zone. And Miami leads it 27-24. Sorry, Ahmad, they told me it would be Bob. So, Ahmad... <laughs> Ahmad Rashad with the update, and here at RFK, 10-3 Redskins, but Cleveland threatening with a first down at the 16. Mack, off-tackle play, hard to bring down. He's almost to the 10. Todd Bowles finally hangs on and gets him to the ground. Well, Ahmad gave us the update on the Miami Jet game. Here are the other scores, and Cincinnati ups its lead. Not surprised that Cincinnati is on the long end of the score, but the margin does surprise me a bit. Yeah, and me too. I know Cincinnati's at home. That's got to be a big edge, but uh, both of these teams are fine defensive teams. Uh, I'm surprised at that wide a margin. And at RFK, 10-3 skins. Second and six for the Browns. The ball spotted at the 12 of Washington. Kozar changing the play. No, he's saying he can't hear.
Sometimes when the quarterback turns around to get a little help from the referee, <laughs> the fans even get more excited and start <laughs> yelling louder. But as a quarterback, folks, you're schooled, you're drilled. Do not get up under center to take that snap. If you're not absolutely sure, your guys can hear. Don't let the official talk you into getting up there. Some quarterbacks, they, they kind of get pushed into taking the snap. I don't think Kozar will do that. He'll take it as long as he can so he can get his offense to hear. What would the referee say to you? Come on, let's go. Try and get a snap. Try and get a snap. You're just exciting the crowd. Get up on the center. <laughs> and the quarterback says, I can't. I can't. My players can't hear. Kozar's going to try it. With a long count to boot, and he can't hear. And the fans, realizing they're having an effect, do become inspired. Oh, yeah, sure. You see, the thing I was always a little bit edgy about is putting my hands up underneath the center, knowing that people can't hear. What if that center thinks he hears something and snaps the ball quickly, you know? And it's an uncomfortable feeling as a quarterback even putting your hands under the center when you don't want that snap. Here we go again. Mack inside the 10, pounds forward to about the seven yard line. Kevin Mack has been a welcome addition to this Cleveland offense today. Neil Okowitz made the tackle for the Redskins. He's rushed for 93 yards in his return to the Cleveland lineup. And the rushing game has helped here when the passing gets a little off. They can go to a ground attack and gain some yardage. The defense can't always play pass. They have to play the run. It helps open up the play action pass. But this man, Kevin Mack, has gained a lot of these yards on his own by breaking tackles today. Such a strong runner. And he's already over 90 for today. Third and one from the Redskins, seven. Mack tries to bounce outside, gets to the five-yard line. That's enough for a first down. Let's go back to Ahmad Rashad now at NFL Live. He has another update for us. All right, Tom, in Cincinnati, the Bengals are winning big over the Buffalo Bills after this one-yard touchdown run by Icky Woods. His second of the day, his 12th of the year, the Bills trail 28-7. like a flag going down for that uh, end zone celebration, but the Bengals with plenty of reason to celebrate at Riverfront today. Kevin Mack has carried four straight times from the 30 down to the five-yard line. It's first and goal at that point. Viner is the only setback now, and flags fly as the Browns' offense obviously disrupted by the crowd noise. Well, I have to believe Bercozzi wasn't sure about the snap count. The rest of the team got off early. Even Kozar looked like he wanted to back out. I think Bercozzi, the center for the Cleveland Browns, was a little mixed up or he couldn't hear. Fred Wyatt and his crew discussing it. And here's the call. First start, offense. First down. Marty Schottenheimer on the sideline. And here's what happened. Well, everybody you see went. everybody moving, Kozar pulling out, and Rikosi didn't snap the ball. Uh, somebody thought it was on one when it was on two. <laughs> First down now, but the ball back to the 10-yard line. First, it should be first and goal. Kozar stands in there and then delivers it. No one uh, close to the football. Maybe Langhorn back at the end of the end zone was closest to it, but Kozar felt the pressure and had to unload it. Daryl Grant was leading the charge, and Charles Mann was in there as well. Oh, it was that pressure. Here's Rikosi, number 73, to center. He's looking to see who he's going to block or try to hear the snap count one. But the thing that broke this pass play up was the pressure from the left side that Kozar got. It, he, was, uh, he threw the ball off target because he got hit. Second and goal from the 10. Miner on the draw. The 
takes it back to the five yard line. He got about five yards on the play. It'll be third and goal from the five for the Browns. Wilbur Marshall's been all over the field today on the right side of your screen, number 58. He wants to get up here and make the tackle. It Biner puts a good move to jump outside, showing some nice quickness, and Marshall could never quite get into the play. Cleveland bidding to tie the game. The Redskins lead it 10-3. 10 minutes and 45 seconds left in the game. Each of these teams needing a win to stay alive for the playoff hunt. And Washington only had 10 men on the field. They have to take a timeout. It comes with 10.37 left in the game, and the Redskins up by seven. Tuesday, some guys Lee Marvin and Chuck Norris are fighting back against Browns, but this one the big one, third and goal from the five. Kozar for the end zone. Incomplete, a flag down. Darrell Green colliding. And I believe it's going to be called for interference as they discuss it. Manley pleading the case. Green walks away in disgust. And Joe Pass Gibbs. interference. Number 28. The ball's on the one-yard line. First down. So it is Darrell Green called for pass interference. Hey, this is a tough call. On the top left of your screen, you'll see Green going downfield with Brennan. The ball's underthrown, and Brennan tries to get back to it. And Green just happens to be in great shape. Now, I, that's, a, that's a tough one to call there. I, I really, being a defensive player that I used to be, thinks this is a lousy call. Meantime, uh, I don't know how Green could have gotten out of his way. I, I really can't believe that that should have been pass interference. When were you a defensive player? Oh, man, my days at Alabama and running down a lot of backs after they intercepted passes. First and goal from the one. That was a four-yard penalty. Kozar hands it to Mack. Stopped short. Did he fumble? No, the ball was dead. Going back to that last play with Green, you see, he had position, and the position between the ball and the receiver was there. He didn't try to take anything What's away that? from him. What is he saying? I think his mic is shorting out Fred Wine. He was saying the ball was down. All right, well, here's the play again. See if we can get a better look. There's Green in the bottom. Well, he put that left arm up. Had he not put that left arm up, I think he could have gotten away with it. But seeing this replay, he did put a left arm up. Tom. So he gave him a forearm to the chest. Yep. Second and goal from the one. Mack. Touchdown, Cleveland. So the Cleveland Browns march down the field and are only the extra point away from tying the game. They get a crucial pass interference call in the end zone. And Marty Schottenheimer and Joe Gibbs hoping to get their teams back into the playoffs and going right down to the wire with 9.41 left and Barr on to try to tie the game. Mac, 96 yards on the day. Simply takes the hand up through a good hole once again by this Cleveland Brown offensive line. You know, those linemen are happy to have Mack back in there, too. Bars kick splits the uprights. There's a flag down. There's a flag on the play. Holding number 91. So the holding call against Cleveland, against Sam Clancy, and they'll have to kick over. Well, it's a short extra point try, I know, but it's not automatic. With the weather conditions, the ball's a little bit slick. The center's got to make a good snap, and the holder's got to catch a wet ball. Let's see if this is the hold over here by Clancy, number 91. Look how he hooked his arm inside there on Daryl Green to pull him to the ground. You're not allowed to do that, Clancy. So now it'll be a 30-yard extra point attempt by Matt Barr. It's still good. 
So the Cleveland Browns with a 76 yard drive and the extra point have tied the score at 10. Cleveland Browns with a long drive it consumed nearly 11 minutes and covered 76 yards. Mack got it over for the touchdown after the pass interference call kept the drive alive. Here's Barr's kick taken by Sanders. To the 20 almost got to the outside dives forward beyond the 30 yard line where the Redskins take over. Let's go to Ahmad Rashad. Tom, Miami at the Jets. The Dolphins have stunned the Jets. The slumping Dan Marino is slumping no more. Here he hits Farrell Edmonds on this 80-yard touchdown. The Dolphins have scored 20 unanswered points. Marino has thrown five touchdown passes on the day. The Dolphins lead 34-24. And here at RFK, a 10-10 deadlock with 9-32 left in the game. The Redskins have the ball. First down at their 31. Morris. Good run by Jamie Morris. Shakes off a couple of tacklers. He's out to the 45-yard line again. 13 and a Redskin first down. Eddie Johnson made the tackle for the Cleveland Browns. Big hole on the left side of the line over here. Jim Lachey, number 79, checks off, and he blocks the linebacker, Johnson. And boy, there's a lot of running room in there for Jamie Morris. Eddie Johnson recovers to get the first hit, but a nice hole by the offensive line. Redskin running game has certainly been more powerful here in the second half. Morris again. Cuts it upfield. Got about two or three that time. In on the tackle, Clay Matthews and Mike Johnson, a couple of the linebackers, the talented Brown linebackers. Redskins running game has improved, but I still feel they're going to have to pass the ball successfully to convert some points on this drive. I don't think they're going to be able to keep it on the ground go right down the field and score not against this Cleveland bunch with the fine linebacking core that they have they're going to have to put it in the air spot the ball at the 49 so a gain of five on the last play for Morris it's second and five Morris the tailback in the eye here's a reverse Art Monk he's got running room inside the 40 to the 30 and knocked out of bounds at about the 26 yard line by Frank Minifield. Twenty four yards on the reverse to Monk. What a beautiful play. Washington makes it look like it's going to be a run up the middle. Then they run the reverse with Monk around here. Hey all he has is teammates out in front of him and Clay Matthews making a desperate leap at him and couldn't get him. Now if you could get this kind of yardage on your running plays folks I'd say yeah stay with the running game. Don't worry about passing. <laughs> Eight minutes left in the game. First down Redskins at the Brown 28 yard line. Game tied at 10. Morris up the middle. Stopped at the 25 by Eddie Johnson. Gain of three. It'll be second and seven coming up. Buffalo gets another touchdown. Philadelphia seesaws back on top of the Cardinals. We had the update from Ahmad on the Miami Jet game. And here at RFK, a 10 10 contest, 7 30 left. Football. Let's see who got it. Back to the Redskins. And falling on the ball was Russ Grimm, the veteran offensive lineman of the Redskins, who made a saving recovery of the fumble. Well, I don't know what caused the fumble, but you've got to figure they're lucky to just have one so far. Here you see Grimm, number 68, getting in and getting on the ball. Remember, the regular center, the starting center for the Redskins, Bostic, has been injured, and Raleigh McKenzie is playing center. So that may have contributed to the fumble. I'm not sure. Mark Rippon facing a third and five. All at the 23 of the Browns. Monk in motion, and Rippon will pass. Incomplete. Away at the last minute, a good defensive play. 
by Will Hill of the Browns. Oliphant, the intended receiver, and Hill, who was in on the nickel package, managed to knock it away. Hill gets a little help from the umpire here, who is just shielding the ball a little bit. And, uh, well, if the ball's out in front a little farther, maybe they'd have had the completion. But uh, I didn't see much in that play. Will Hill almost took it the other way. If he held on to it, he'd have had an open field to run for. So a field goal attempt coming up. Coleman, the punter, holds. Chip Lowmiller will try the field goal. There's Coleman getting set. It'll be about 40 or 41 yards. About a 41-yard attempt. His longest has been 46. Lowmiller from 40. And the Redskins regain the lead. A 40-yard field goal by Chip Lowmiller. The rookie out of Minnesota. And with 6.27 left, the Redskins are in front. The drive is on. Mazda's year-end sales drive. It's already the biggest sales year in Mazda history, but your Mazda dealer wants to close it out with a bang. Here's the kick. It's been a seesaw fair here at RFK, and the kick taken by the Browns. Glenn Young comes forward to the 20 and is stopped in his tracks right there. So 80 yards away from the end zone, the Cleveland Browns take over, trailing by a field goal, and six minutes, 19 seconds left in the game. Well, you know, Tom, that last drive, Cleveland used up 10 minutes and 50-some-odd seconds on the clock. Now, I don't, they don't have that luxury now. They're going to have to throw the ball more often. They can't just stay with the run game. It's been so successful for them. So I'm sure we'll see Kozar put the ball in the air more often. He's hit on 20 of 30 for 188 yards today. Kozar hits him with a pass. Biner makes a good gain out of it. Picks up seven on the play as he's knocked out of bounds. And it was mostly due to the running of Biner there as he caught the short pass, finally stopped on the play by Kaufman. Hey, what else helped in this play was Biner's ability and his presence of mind to go after the ball. When Kozar threw the pass, Biner actually goes back to catch the ball to take it away from Elvin Walton, the defender. If you watch on the left side of your screen, you'll see Biner closing in to catch the pass. And by going for the ball, he's able to get away from Elvin Walton and make the game. Second and three for the Browns. Kevin Mack has a first down, stopped just short of the 30 as we go back to Ahmad Rashad for an update. All right, Tom, in Cincinnati, Buffalo with the best record in the NFL is fighting its way back. Here, Jim Kelly finds Andre Reed on this 36 yard, appears to be a touchdown to me, but I'm sitting here in New York. The referee didn't think so. They mark it at the one. Rob Riggs scores on the next play. The Bengals lead 28-21. The Bills not dead yet. Here at RFK, you see the clock inside five minutes and a three-point Washington lead. The Browns have it third down and a yard to go at their own 29. Kevin Mack lowers his head and picks up the Brown first down. And that should be enough to give him 100 yards rushing on the day. And the Browns keep the ball as Mack picks up a tough first down. 101 yards rushing for Kevin Mack after missing two consecutive games. Looks a little tired, Joe, but he's still in there. <laughs> well, that's the thing Marty Schottenheimer, the coach, was concerned with was his stamina. Since Mack hadn't played the last two weeks, he told me he'd use him about half the time. But <laughs> I think he's using him a lot more than he planned on. First down from the 32. Delayed handoff. Kevin Mack bouncing off tacklers at the 40. Gets a block at the 45 to the 47. Kevin Mack for 15 yards. Walton and Bowles finally stop him. But Mack, is he asking to come out with his hand in the air? <laughs> yes, he is. That's why that hand's up. He wants to get a little blow now. 
We thought he was a, a bit tired, and again, that's what Schottenheimer is concerned with. Here's a draw play. Now, Mack will jump around one tackler. Watch his quick change of direction. For a big man, I tell you, he has some awfully quick feet. I bet he's a good dancer, Tom. <laughs> I don't want to uh, have him step on my foot, I'll tell you that. <laughs> oh, yeah. For the ninth time in his career, he's over 100 yards rushing, and the Browns have a first down at the 47. Lozar's pass in and out of the hands of Herman Fontenot, an incomplete. Stops the clock with 3.01 remaining. Herman's not happy with that drop pass, of course, but he wasn't going to get very far. Clarence Vaughn, the safety, was right there, right behind him to make the tackle had he held on to it. Bernie would have liked to have gotten downfield to one of his wide receivers, but there was good coverage by that skin secondary downfield. 13-10, red skin lead. Second and 10 from the Cleveland 47. Lozar's pass incomplete. Batted away by Alvin Walton, intended for Ozzie Newsom. Clock stops at 2.57. That's some game at Riverfront today. Oh boy, Buffalo has come back. One touchdown down. Tremendous game here at RFK Memorial Stadium in the nation's capital. Joe Gibbs team clinging to a three-point lead. 2.57 left. Cleveland has it third and 10 at the 47. Pressure on Kozar. Let's it go complete. Brennan's got it. Out of bounds at about the 31-yard line. Kozar with a clutch delivery to Brennan for a Cleveland first down. It went for 22 yards. Wilbur Marshall nearly gets in there to get Kozar, but number 58, watch, he'll look like he's coming clean, but just at the last second, Biner gets a little bit of shoulder on him to slow him down, and Kozar with that great anticipation and touch on his pass just lays it out there beautifully for Brennan. Here you see Marshall nearly getting him, but look how far out in front Kozar lays that pass. A beautiful pass. Joe, you're the expert, but uh, Kosar and Marino would seem to me to be a, in a class all by themselves and getting rid of the football at the last minute. Their anticipation is the best, yes. Tim Manoa into the game for the first time, carries the ball to the 30, got one or maybe two yards on the play, and the clock continues to move down to 240. Mann and Grant stopping Tim Manoa. What Cleveland wants to do now, certainly, Number one, they'd like to score. Number two, they'd like to use a lot of the clock while they're doing it so they don't give the ball back to Washington with time for Washington to score again. So they'd like to eat this clock up and continue to move the ball. Matt Barr on the sideline right now. It would be about a 47-yard attempt. His longest of the season has been 47. The Browns hope to get him a little closer. Kosar in the flat, complete to Mack. Mack dodges a tackler, then is wrapped up and banged down just inside the 30. It'll be short of the first down. The ball came loose, but it was ruled down. All right, we've come to the two-minute warning in Washington, D.C. A dramatic conclusion coming up. Aiming to hang on to a three-point lead here at RFK, and it's it's been a great game, a well-played game from two teams that are struggling to make the playoffs again this year, but impressive today. Hey, these teams are struggling to make the playoffs, but people in football know these are two good teams. I mean, these fellas don't come uh, at the top of your most desirable list of opponents that you want to play. Here's what the Cleveland Browns have done today. Kozar's passed for 219 yards. He's hit 23 of 36. Kevin Mack over 100 yards rushing. Biner, the leading receiver on the year, has caught seven balls. And Barr has hit one of two. He missed a field goal, which would have tied the game, of course, as we look at it now in the first quarter. Right now it's third down and about seven yards to go for the first down. 
Cleveland has the ball at the 27 of the Redskins. The score is 13 to 10 Washington. This is the 10th play of the drive. On the ground, it's Biner to the 10. Touchdown! carries 27 yards for the Brown touchdown and the Redskins seem shocked. Biner of course fumbled it against Denver in the AFC championship game a year ago or it might have been the Browns and the Redskins in the Super Bowl. That's right and that play calling right there folks any offensive coordinator would have been happy to make this one a beautiful block and trap in the middle once again a missed tackle in there and those missed tackles kill the defense and Biner with second effort gets in that end zone good call by coach Schottenheimer Barr hits the extra point after Biner with his longest run of the year has given Cleveland a 17 13 lead all right stand by replay on slow mo a roll a and dissolve a Good. Roll C. Wipe C. Okay. Let's get white and out on camera eight over there. Nod so I know you're there, somebody. Ready, D. Get back to the coach on that. Okay, let's go to camera five, please. White and out. Ready, camera eight. Take eight. <laughs> I didn't know your family was in town. <laughs> go to camera two. Nice work, people. Very nice work. For the teamwork, the clean, crisp taste of Beechwood aged Budweiser. So what are you going to do tonight? Probably watch TV. Cleveland Browns celebrating on the sideline after they cover 80 yards in 10 plays, just over four and a half minutes, converting three big third downs, and then getting this run from Ernest Miner, his longest run of the season. Good run, good blocking up front. And I again, what I think it was a brilliant play call. It's a crucial situation. Washington's coming after the pass, and it was a good draw call and uh, Give old Coach Schottenheimer, the offensive coordinator, a big plus for that one, folks. <laughs> They've been on his case the last few weeks about the plays he's been calling, and Coach Gibbs, I know, is not very happy. He needs a touchdown now to get uh, to get a win here. Three points won't help him. And Mark Rippon, the young quarterback, will bear the responsibility of taking his team downfield with just a minute 49 remaining. Doug Williams, most viable player in the Super Bowl with that fantastic game, sitting on the top of the bench on the Redskins sideline, and the Redskins desperately needing a win to stay in playoff contention. Boy, how the game of football works on one's nervous system, on their emotions. A few moments ago, the Washington Redskins were sky high. They'd stopped Cleveland. They kicked the field goal. They went ahead, and everyone was happy, happy. Now you look at Doug Williams on the sideline and the bench there, and... Uh, just pondering what have we done again we've gotten ourselves into a tough situation what do you have to do to win huh Doug remember the Redskins have only two timeouts left they took one when they had only 10 men on the field on defense Sanders chases into his own end zone and downs it there so 80 yards to go for the Redskins and a minute 49 left here's the Washington report card how would you assess Rippon's day well, I think he's done well. He hasn't played as good as he could, certainly. He's missed some open receivers. Morris has done a good job. Hey, the Redskins haven't played a bad game today. I think the Cleveland Browns have played a good game, and that's the reason they're up right now. Cleveland 17, Washington 13. First down, Mark Rippon and the Redskins at their own 20. And once again, 149 showing on the clock. Rippon pumps once and then lets it go. It's incomplete. Art Monk was the intended receiver, and Mark Harper was with him. Yeah, Mark Harper was all over him. Coach Gibbs getting into the play calling act right now. That's Don Bro to his left, the gentleman that sings singles in the plays. Tough situation for a young quarterback to drive 80 yards against the best pass defense in football, the Cleveland Browns. Now goes in motion. Rippon. Incomplete through the hands of Oliphant, the intended receiver. It looked like it went right through his hands, Joe. <laughs> it looked like it went right past the defender. 
and through Oliphant's hands. Look here at the top of your screen. This isn't it here. This is Gary Clark. But right here, 25 coming into play. And the ball is going to go right through his arms. Looky there. Oh, how he'd wish to have that one back. Oliphant, the man that blocked the punt earlier that led to a Redskin score. Third and 10 for Rippon with a minute 39 left. Rippon chased from the puck. Can't sit, and is sacked. Taken down at the seven-yard line. The Cleveland Browns sacking Rippon for the first time today, and it comes at a crucial time for a loss of 13 yards. It's going to make it fourth down and 23 yards here. It's a long way to go, but hey, Rippon was doing everything he could to try and find an open receiver. That's one time that, you know, folks say, well, why doesn't he throw the ball away? Hey, he kept trying to get to an open receiver. He's trying to win this game. Now it's a tough situation. Clancy sacked him, and it's fourth and 21. Here's Rippon's pass. Monk, he's got it. Knocked down at the 30-yard line. Is it enough for the first down? It's right at the marker. This will be a crucial spot for the Redskins. Rippon signaling for the timeout. Let's see if he got enough. Art Monk comes up with a big catch. He's in the middle of your screen, and he simply runs straight down the field. Now, had Felix Wright, the safety, gone for the ball here, he might have had it intercepted. Well, no, he's coming in a little late. Oh, and he tried to jar it loose, but Monk does a wonderful job of holding on to that ball. He did indeed. It, he is a strong man for a wide receiver. That pays off for him here. Oh, sure. He takes a hard hit right there. My goodness. And he appears to be well over the line, enough for the first down. And it is a Redskin first down. Clutch reception ripping to Monk. And with 53 seconds and one timeout left, the Redskins have a first down at their own 30. Well, you mentioned earlier, Tom, the Redskins had, well, I should say wasted timeout, but that's what it's going to amount to. They didn't have enough men on the field uh, the last time Cleveland was down there. And, uh, they had to call a timeout early in the fourth quarter. Now they only have one left. It may come back to Hanum. Remember, the Redskins have to score a touchdown. And they trail by four. Griffin rolling to his right, sets, fires, intercepted. Intercepted by the Cleveland Browns. And once again, the Browns' pass defense comes to the fore, and Mark Harper with his second interception of the season kills the Redskin drive. It was a tipped ball, and Harper was there to gather it in. Not only kills the Redskin drive, but I think it's going to kill their playoff hopes. I don't believe they're going to make it with seven losses. Right here in the middle of the screen, the ball's a little high. Now, had the ball been down, it might have been a completion, but you see the ball's a little high. Sanders, how much of his hands does he get on the ball? I don't know. The ball's wet. And, of course, Harper's right there, happily accepts the ball, you know. I like the way he found a hole out there, too, to hide in, Tom, go down to the ground. He didn't want to risk the, intercept, the fumble. Right here, Harper will go ahead and lay down just so he doesn't fumble the ball. And so now the Browns will just try to kill the clock and preserve the victory. Joe Gibbs says turnovers have contributed to their downfall this season, and we just had graphic evidence of that. So the defending Super Bowl champions in danger of not returning to the playoffs. If the season had ended before today's game, they would not have been in the playoffs, and here are the contenders in Washington down at the bottom of the list if they lose this game, and it appears they will to go six and seven. The Redskins calling their final timeout with 39 seconds left in the game. As far as the AFC is concerned, we'll get to them in a moment. Cleveland trailing some of the AFC Eastern teams that still play each other. So the Browns have a bit of an edge over the Redskins in that department. And Buffalo already has clinched the Eastern Division title, although they trail Cincinnati at the moment in today's action.
It's been a rainy, soggy afternoon, but a tremendous football game, which will end on a sour note for Doug Williams and Mark Rippon, the quarterbacks of the Redskins. But Marty Schottenheimer playing at RFK Stadium with the Browns here for the